So, with the year wrapping up, many in the anime community are making their year end video about all the top or worst shows of the year. I am not because I still have over 20 shows I'm trying to get through, and yeah, I really don't plan this out well. So, expect that video sometime in March, probably. But just because I'm focused on 2017 shows doesn't mean I haven't been looking over all the shows for next year. And there's a lot to be excited about. So I want to share with you the shows that I'm most excited for that have been announced for 2018. Now some of these I'm not entirely sure I will like, but there's some aspect to stand out, or at least stand out to me, that make me want to try them. The first 10 of these uh, will be sequels, or some type of continuation of a previous franchise. And I'll also go through some of them pretty quickly because it's obvious why I'd be excited. But there are also some new franchises that I'll talk about near the end. So let's get on with the list. Number one, Boku no Hero Season 3. It's my favorite anime. Why wouldn't I want more? Attack on Titan Season 3. I love the first season, so yeah, obvious here. Number three, Steins Gate Zero. Like the first two, this is a follow-on to a show I really liked. With this one, though, I think its placement within the events of the original will let the story be something that the original one could not be. The whole idea of time traveling and dealing with how Okabe deals with the challenges and failures that the time travel causes was what made the first season so great, and it looks like we'll get more of that here and take it even further. Plus, it could have a chance to explore parts of the world the first one just wasn't able to. And yeah, hard to get into the exact reasons I've hyped because I don't want to spoil the first one here, so yeah, go watch both of these when you can. Number 4, Sword Art Online Season 3. This one might be surprised that I'd be excited about considering I was not a fan of the show before, but when I watched the Ordinal Scale in the dub, I ended up liking it quite a bit, and at the very least the concepts that are being explored in SAO and this new season are interesting, especially with like a true AI. There's a lot of shows about going to a video game like World, but few that deal with the aftermath, and that's where I feel that Ordinal Scale is able to be unique. So if they can keep that up with unique concepts and explore these new ideas in a cool way, I think I'll enjoy it. Plus, there'll be cool actions, so you can't go too wrong with that. So it may not live up to the other shows I've talked about so far, but I'm hoping to enjoy this as a cool action show with interesting concepts that do not completely fall apart, though we'll see. Number 5, Tokyo Ghoul Re. This is another one I'm not sure I will like, but I do have some hope. Season 1 had a lot to like with all the intensity around Kaneki becoming a ghoul but trying to maintain his humanity. Then Route A came around and tried to make the narrative a grander one about society and the ghouls there, and that just didn't really work. So I am hoping that Re will follow more of the first seasons in quality and then add the cool music from Root A, and then I will be really happy. Number 6, Cardcaptor Sakura Clear Card Hen. Well, some of these shows we've been waiting for years for the next season, in this case, there's been a decade-long wait. Granted, the first one did end pretty complete, but still. And Cardcaptor was one of the shows that I liked as a kid, so I do want to see more of it, though I do worry that now that I'm older, I might not like it as much. And looking at what has been written about the manga, I'm not sure if they'll offer anything all that new beyond like episodic stories about getting new cards. Still, I am curious to watch this and I will watch it just to see how much I will like it. And now number 7, Real Life Season 2? Kind of. It's like a 4 episode OVA thing. And I like the first season, I want to see the story continued, and yeah, not too much here. Number 8, FLCL Season 2, which we will hopefully get this year, and yeah, more FLCL is good, I hope, and I hope it does come out this year. Number 9, Persona 5 The Animation. And I'm looking forward to it because Persona 5 has been so highly regarded, and the person directing this one is also the same director as From the New World, which is one of my favorite anime ever, so you have a good source material, good director, so this should be good, I hope. And number 10, Digimon Try Movie 6. And this is more because I'm excited for the series as a whole to be done so I can go marathon all six movies. So yeah, looking forward to that because like Hardcaptor, Digimon is a show I really liked as a child. It's probably my favorite childhood anime. And yeah, it's hopefully this will live up to what I remember Digimon was like, or at least be nostalgic enough that I don't care. And since I think 10 sequels or continuations is enough, let's move on to some newer shows. So at number 11, we have the Ito Junai Collection. This series adapts the works of the horror mangaka Ito Junji. Anyway, he is known for manga like Uzumaki, and while I have not read any of his manga, his reputation makes me excited to see his stories brought to life in anime. 
I'm not all that sure I like him though because I'm not a big fan of a lot of horror. Though I will give it a try and see how mentally scarring it is and then maybe go watch five episodes of Gintama to get those feelings out of my mind. Number 12, Kokoku. This is a show that is starting in the winter, so not much longer. And it is the TV series I'm most excited for for this season. It's about a girl who has to rescue her family from kidnappers. There are superpowers involved. It just feels like it could be a great thriller. Though I could be horribly wrong and we'll have to see, though it feels like it could be one I will really like. Number 13, Darling in the Fran X6. This is a mech anime by Trigger that involves characters raised for the sole purpose of piloting these mechs. There are so many things about this description that make me feel like it could be good. It is a mech anime from Trigger and Imaishi will be involved in the action scenes and with what he did with Gurren Lagann and many other mech anime. Those should be really great. And the story feels like it'd be something like Kiznavir with a lot of emotional power. This will be something unique and probably nothing we can describe until we've actually seen the show. Number 14, Devilman Crybaby. This looks like it could be an amazing dark action series directed by Masaki Yuasa, known for among other things as Tatami Galaxy. His shows always have a great style to them, which lets, which allows them to really bring out the stories in ways a normal style could not. I am curious how it will work with an action show and an adaptation of a manga where he does not have complete control of the story. But looking at the trailer, it should be a great show though, and it will be out on Netflix in like four days as of recording this. Number 15, Maho Shoujo Ori. And now for something completely different. And I mean completely. This is a magical girl show where the main character transforms to fight evil, but when she transforms, she becomes a magical boy still wearing a dress. And lots of muscles. Not quite as many as Jojo, but kind of getting up there. Apparently this is also a BL title, so yeah, does this seem stupid yet? If not, then you have spent way too much time with anime. But in this case, it feels like it'll be something that is so stupid it is fun. And those shows can be some of my favorites. Besides, we all need more comedy mixed in with all these super serious shows I've talked about, and I cannot think of if a show where a magical girl changes genders when they transform that I have not enjoyed. Number 16, Caligurla. This is one that I know very little about except for the short summary that Mew is a virtual idol program that lures people into a digital world Mobius and they are forced to experience school life over and over. This feels like it could play out kind of like a horror with school life setting when people being forced into it. Or at least that's what I'm getting from the picture and the lack of color there. It could be a really interesting take on the whole idol thing too, especially between the commonality between Mew's name and Mew's from Love Live. We'll have to see, but I think this could really be one to watch out for. Number 17, Hisone to Masotan. And again, this is one where we really know nothing about it, but it features a dragon pilot saving the world and the image from it looks just like cute and adventurous. Plus this is bone, so it will have cool action and Mari Okada is writing the script, so it will have lots of feelings. Hopefully. But this is a show that I shall certainly keep an eye on as more information is released. And lastly, we're just going to go with Maho Shoujo Sai. This is one that there are a lot of reasons why people are saying it won't be good. But I always enjoy dark magical girl shows because of the contrast between the cute and noble idea of saving the world and with the harsh reality that that's not how this world works. Plus this one seems like it could have lots of cool action so I'm going to go with this one as my number 18 pick. And yeah, these are all unranked if I didn't say that before, so yeah. So yes, thank you for watching, and leave down in the comments what your top shows of next year you think will be, and then we can go back to this at the end of the year and see how wrong we all are because we have terrible taste or something. Anyway, see you on my next video.